moment, everyone's a little bit worried about uh, dying of, uh, well, many people are dying of COVID-19, even though, as we know, most people, most healthy people have no chance or very little chance of dying of uh, COVID-19. But it made me think, why are we so scared? And it made me call to mind Mark Twain's words, where um, he said that he wasn't unduly concerned with dying because he'd been <laughs> dead uh, for many billions of years before he, he was born and he'd never suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. So maybe he's sort of suggesting there's a nothingness uh, before life and maybe after life. Or maybe suggesting that maybe people are just uh, returned to being a slight sort of bobbing flotsam on a sea of consciousness um, before they're born. Now, some people seem to be a little bit like that after they're born. And uh, the problem is that that's causing a little bit of inconvenience for the rest of us, particularly at the moment. So, <laughs> so I just want to look at like, like maybe why that might be the case. Um, one of the things that I've been realizing the uh, older I get and the more I think about stuff is that uh, the importance of truth and justice. Um, now I think they've, they're, they're, I don't know if there's any more pillars but they seem to be two pivotal pillars in the uh, cause of liberty uh, which is a cause that is pretty um, important to us at the moment with what's going on around us. Now. The thing about that is it's kind of ephemeral and difficult to get your head around, like how do I pursue the truth, the causes of truth and justice in my day-to-day -day life, in my personal life, and you maybe think it's like too big a mission or too big a adventure to set out upon, but I think we can, I think we can in our personal lives, we have to, uh, we have to live with a sort of fairness to ourselves and others, we have to be truthful to ourselves and others in, in the way we go about things because whatever we do, even if we pretend that it's not going to affect us or we can tell ourselves little lies as we go about things, um, whether other people are present or not, it manifests either on the inside or the outside in some way. I think it's pretty unavoidable, almost like uh, everything has an equal and opposite reaction whether we like to admit to it or not. Um, um, although it's easy not to do this because especially <laughs> if you've got no oversight a bit like uh, some of the authority figures you might be looking around who've not been adhering to lockdown but if you've got no oversight um, it's very easy to fall into a way where you just you begin your lots of small little what the hells doesn't really matter no one's watching what I do no one cares what I do and uh, maybe I don't know don't know what your vice is maybe you sneak down in the night time and eat all the chocolate cake out of the fridge and uh, <laughs> because no one's around to see you and then uh, you pretend that that's uh, not happened to yourself and to others um, but more importantly I think we have to speak our truths not just to to ourselves but to the people around us um, and let the chips fall where they may especially if they're you know it doesn't matter whether they're sort of American style crispy chips or whether they're soggy British fish and chips, just let them fall, make the mess, we've got to do it because um, in not speaking up we're allowing otherwise um, all kinds of nonsense to uh, take, take and shape our lives and maybe in ways that we don't particularly like. I mean it's hard to do this and a lot of, time, lot of times people in their ordinary life, you know we were talking about uh, truth and justice but um, just in your ordinary life you might think say for example in this instance that lockdown uh, is not the right course of action but in conversation with friends or in passing or people that you meet you might think oh I'm not gonna bring it up it's not really worth my hassle is no one's minds gonna change nothing's gonna change no but you have to think about it how do people's minds ever change they change because they're eroded by coming into conflict with the the seas of opinion or like rivers carving a path down a, a mountainside um, every small action uh, takes its toll on somebody and the more times people hear that they, they come, the more times people come up against the idea that the way they are being taught or conditioned to think is not quite the way they might think about it if they gave it a little bit more time the better really now the problem we have is that we can commit all kinds of tiny little frauds against ourselves when our boss says put up like perspex screens or 
<laughs> or any kind of craziness that I need to wear a mask at work or I think if we, it's time to start refusing because otherwise you let people who are maybe your uh, moral inferiors in government or um, intellectual inferiors in terms of or maybe let's put it a different way um, people less informed than yourself take precedence of your life or, or, and, and guide it and, and, and she move and shape it in a way that I don't think we're all going to like that much. I mean, what will happen if we all accept these things, that we'll uh, come to uh, live amongst those who will take the easy life, will take the money uh, without speaking up. They'll refuse to question, they'll be, refuse to be the person who says no or why not or why are we doing these things and they refuse to speak out until before you know it, we're in a world where um, <laughs> we kind of flooded by the uh, outpourings of a cumulus nimbus, big cotton wool cloud of accumulated mass of unthought out opinions that we don't want that to happen. We don't want it to be uh, uh, taking us away and sweeping us away in its floodwaters. Instead we want to be um, the little droplets that make that cloud so that when it breaks what washes down is like uh, justice rolling down like water and riotousness like a mighty stream.